Hello again, everyone. My name is Ron Flights, and welcome to Faith in Business. On this program, we speak with people in all facets of the business world from throughout Middle Tennessee to see how they share their faith in their businesses. As we all know, sharing our faith with friends can be challenging at times, but sharing in our business community can be far more challenging, sometimes even career adjusting, and yet extremely rewarding. Today, we are blessed to have Christopher Gunn with us. Christopher is the owner of Christopher Gunn Creative and also the music director at Our Lady of the Lake Church in Hendersonville. Christopher, welcome. Thank you, Ron. So nice to be here. Well, we're glad to have you here on Faith in Business. And we're going to get into that and all about you here in just a minute to learn all about you and all the things that you do, which really is some neat stuff. But before that, I want to say a prayer in the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Most Heavenly Father, be with us today as we share moments in our life where faith in our business may be challenging as well as rewarding. We know that you guide us along every day, wherever we are, and we ask your blessings as we listen to these thoughts and words. Thank you, Father, for our audience and giving us this time together. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, okay, Christopher. I'm so delighted to have you here today. You are our first guest, by the way, from Our Lady of the Lake. Oh, you know, on the program, I'm trying to get all 58, 59 parishes on here. Oh, my goal is to do that in the next year or two. But uh, anyhow, today it's for it's you, and we're glad to have you. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about Christopher. About Christopher. Well, who am I? Well, I'm I'm a husband. I'm a father of four beautiful children. I'm a Catholic business owner. I run a design and marketing firm, as you mentioned, Mm -hmm. and I'm also a music director. I'm the music director at Our Lady of the Lake. So, Ron, I wear a lot of hats. You do, absolutely. (laughs) But really at the heart of who I am, I'm I'm a fairly ordinary guy and I'm just trying to do extraordinary things for other people and the hope is that their life is gonna be changed for the better. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's good. So, so you are a native Tennessean? I am not, actually. My uh-huh. wife and I moved here in 07. So we were talking about getting married and um, raising a family. And so we said, well, uh, I'm from Mobile, Alabama, and she's from New Hampshire. We met in college, and we said, um, we I really hope college was in the middle. That's a long distance. <laughs> Actually, she had to work a little more than I did. We went to University of South Alabama so, <laughs> at the time. <laughs> she did so. have to work pretty hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's a great woman. I always say I, I married up. So. Uh-huh. Great. <laughs> but uh-huh. uh, we were, were talking about raising a family and, and what that's going to look like. And the type of work that, that uh, we wanted to do, it really wasn't conducive in Mobile. So um, we were trying to find a place that was more of like a graphic design hotspot. So we looked at mm-hmm. um, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. We looked at Nashville, of course, Minneapolis, a few different places, and Nashville just hit a few, several top tens. And so we said, "All right." So got married three days later, packed up, and moved up here. And I uh, transferred college and finished my degree, and we've never looked back. Really? <laughs> yes. Uh, three days after you got married. Yes. That's gutsy. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so it's uh, we, you know, we've been on honeymoon for twelve years now. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, listen. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, more than that, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so okay, you got uh, you got married down in in Mobile, yes. correct? And then you moved up here, which is closer to New Hampshire, but not still real close. Um, and so now you're you're here. Uh, you said you had four kids. Four kids and counting. Okay. Hopefully we're done, but God willing. <laughs> well, we know that. <laughs> okay, we, we were on that track to ourselves. So uh, you're up here, and where'd you go to school at? Um, so I graduated from NOSI College of Art with okay. a degree in a bachelor in graphic art and design, and I focused on graphic design, web design, and 3D modeling and animation. Now, is that in Mobile? No. So so I transferred from University of South Alabama to NOSI College of Art, which is actually it's in Good or it was in Goodlettsville at the time. Okay. So, mm-hmm. Okay. So oh, good. Well, that 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 mm-hmm. kept the travel down. Yes, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> so you've been up here, and did you get the job then with Our Lady of the Lake when you got here, or no? So we came up here without jobs, mm-hmm. and um, you know she she got a job at a karate studio because and also like a a, a ballroom dancing place. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a job at a sign shop in Hendersonville. And, you know, we just kind of bounced around and worked our way through things. And mm-hmm. eventually I, I finished my degree and 
Um, you know, so I've worked, I've worked around Nashville on several jobs, but. Uh-huh. Okay. So you, once you got your degree, then, then you started looking for jobs within your degree. Yes. Area. And, and, and previously in Mobile, I was music director at another parish and I, and I was um, doing some freelance piano work as well for mm-hmm. different parishes. So I had that in my back pocket also. And I, and I applied to a few different places and I actually ended up being the choir director at Christ the King for a few months, uh-huh. and and then other things started happening, and I got a little more traction, and I was offered a job at Our Lady. So uh-huh. um, that was back in '09, I think. Really? So, yeah. Okay. So so now you're you're up here, you're working, and at the same time now you've gotten into the music bit. Were you always into music all the time? Yes, I was. I was, and it's so funny because I've got I've got these two different passions going on. You know, I've got music and I've got design. Mm-hmm. And my dad was always like, "Oh, you you know, you need to kind of focus in on on one thing." And you know, right. you've got so many jobs doing this different different stuff. And and uh, I've I never I've managed to kind of pare down a lot of that stuff. But music and design always just was it was hard to choose one. You know, <laughs> sure. Oh, I bet so. You know, especially if you're passionate about both of them. Mm-hmm. So you're you're now over at Our Lady of the Lake and. Tell me about what is entailed with, with with a job at Our Lady of the Lake. I mean, as a music director. Sure. Okay. Sure. Well, you know. Do you have to pick out the hymns every week? I do, yes. Okay. Yeah, so I do music selection. I handle all special liturgies. Um, and I also train and do, and, you know, basically maintain the choir and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's funny uh, working in in um, in just any kind of religious capacity. You you your job you have a job, but you also have a ministry. So mm-hmm. there's parts of your job that is a job, the part you really don't really want to do necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have your ministry part. And um, you know, Our Lady is is just such a blessing for me because most of it is ministry. <laughs> right. No, that's good. So. That's good. Well, and you're very passionate about what you do too. So that's, that makes it even more fun. Now, how many masses do they have a weekend? Oh goodness. Let's see. Well, they have uh, one Saturday night. Mm-hmm. They've got typically two on Sunday mm-hmm. plus the Spanish mass on Sunday. So I'd say four on a weekend. Okay. Now you're involved with three or all four. But usually it's three, but I'll sub for the Spanish mass if I need to. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you have a choir there too? Yes. So the Saturday night is more of like the guitar mass. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have a few singers that do that. We usually have a violinist that comes in as well. Um, and then Sunday, um, the 8.30 and the 11 Masses, usually the 11 tends to have a fuller choir than the 8.30, but both of them kind of have choirs depending on the week. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it fluctuates with the season. <laughs> right, right. No, no, I understand. Um, that's, I, I've always found that interesting. And, and I, you know, I always wondered if, if, the, um, if there was some guidance from, from the Catholic Church as to what particular hymns you should, you should uh, arrange for every week. There is. Uh, there are things that, that you, um, you know, there's, there's standards that you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the nice thing about, about Catholicism is there, uh, there's a consideration for the different flavors of each parish. You know, so, you know, we might be doing um, chants and, mm-hmm. and hymns for certain parts or certain masses, uh, but we also have the ability to add in other stuff as well. And, and that's nice because that, that's kind of a very ministerial part of that job where um, my job as music director is to make sure that people are engaged musically. Um, they can enter into the mystery of the liturgy. Mm-hmm. And, and that is a, that's a big part of that. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I, would, I would think so. Now, as a music director, um, you know, you, you've got all of this very important stuff to do and certainly very faith-based. Mm-hmm. But as a designer into photography, video, and and other things that you do in your business, uh, is it is it as easy, or it's probably not, I should I probably clarify this, make it a little easier for you, uh, it, it can't be as easy to share your faith in your business work. Well, you certainly have to work a little harder at it, that's mm-hmm. for sure, but there's opportunities everywhere. And, you know, I, I, from the very beginning when I started working um, design jobs, I had this, this entrepreneurial bug that just kept, just kept 
biting me, kept kept bugging me, you know. Uh-huh. And um, and so and one of one of the things that was that was nagging at me on that was the fact that I really I couldn't really choose the clients that I was working with, and the values that they were bringing to the table to their business. Very interesting. Their, their audience. Mm-hmm. So so that that really, uh, you know, that really kind of set wrong with me in, in certain ways because a lot of people don't realize as a designer as a marketer we actually have a big responsibility we really shape culture in a way we, we you do promote, we mm-hmm. promote um, and so with that uh, responsibility I mean I I've, it's it's important for me to be able to have control of who am I promoting mm-hmm. what am I promoting am I working with people who have like values to mine um, so being an entrepreneur was a great solution for that um, solves a lot of things Sure. That's, that's certainly one of them. So a lot of my clients, I work with a lot of religious organizations. I work with uh, orders like the Passionists and the Companions of the Cross mm-hmm. uh, and dioceses as well. Um, I'll go around and I'll, I'll, uh, I do a lot of event photography, so I'll do ordination um, photography. Really? For priests, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I've done a few of those in Houston. Um, and, uh, and so just, just being able to share, to minister in that way as a business is it's so, so rewarding, so, so fulfilling. And knowing that I'm helping these people spread and minister to people in that way. I mean, mm-hmm. Ron, you, you really can't beat that. <laughs> no, 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 I would think not. Um, and the ability to evangelize you know, to, to your clients, you know, obviously it's a lot easier when, when you share the same faith or, or at, at least Christianity, you know, that certainly is helpful. Um, anything that's faith-based, I'm sure, would make it life a lot easier. But uh, very, very interesting. Um, so now you got in, you were working for a company, and something triggered this entrepreneurial spirit all of a sudden that, that you mentioned before. Um, how did it really come about? How did it really come about? Mm-hmm. Well. There were a few projects I was working on that that I was conflicted with, uh-huh. and I mentioned that to them, and I said, you know, listen, I'm I'm not willing to do these projects. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, hire somebody to do it, and or if you need to let me go, that's that's fine too. But I just I can't in good conscience do it, and that that was really the catalyst that really set me um, to to a point where I I got a little scared because. I worried the next day, am I going to have a job? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I was motivated to really think um, on, a, on a much more pertinent level, a much more serious level about what is this going to look like? Um, how can I make this work? Mm-hmm. And so I, I, really, I really started to leverage that, that idea and prayed a lot about it and started working towards that. And so I said, you know what? Um, April 2020, uh, yeah, April 2020 is mm-hmm. the day I'm going to, I'm going to set a deadline. I'm going to, uh, kind of turn, uh, turn the turn, lever here. Yep. Turn the switch. And, uh, and, and as we all know, March 2020 came along and, and that kind of changed everything for me. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I, I was getting calls from clients and they're saying, ah, Christopher, I'm, I'm sorry, but our events canceled. I, we, we can't do what we're going to do with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to have to cancel this or, you know, so just client after client, I lost about 90% of my freelance work. And mm. so thankfully I didn't leave in March. Uh, right. So I had, I had to kind of stick it out for a little longer and mm-hmm. I spent another year just building up a whole new um, client base. And then this February, in February of 2021, I, I went ahead and pulled the trigger and yeah. I went off on my own. So <laughs> That's fantastic. In case you're just joining us, we're speaking with Christopher Gunn. Uh, Christopher is uh, the music director at Our Lady of the Lake and also the owner of Christopher Gunn Creative. Is that also in Hendersonville? It's Goodlitzville. Goodlitzville. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right next door. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, we do want to talk a little bit more about your business later on, though. Um, challenging times that you probably had over the over the years, where, I mean, you know, it's you got four kids and you you and you're you're working here, and then you're also being in, as a music director and such. Uh, any challenging times that really made you call upon your faith to help pull you through? Oh my goodness! Well, just going right back to the the point where I just decided to kind of walk out of my employer's office and into entrepreneurial world. I mean, that that kind of started everything uh, mm-hmm. for me as far as challenging times um, and not challenging in a bad way. Mm-hmm. You know, I believe that we rise up to the occasion. And I think it was Pope Benedict the 16th said, you know, we're not we're not called for comfort. 
we're called for greatness. Mm-hmm. And so fulfilling that is, uh, I mean, it's, that's a challenge. And it is. <laughs> you have to no be question. comfortable with being uncomfortable, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I do that every day. Um, you know, um, it's one thing when you have a stable income. It's another thing when you're, you're chasing the stream and uh, really trying to get out there and evangelize in your own way, the mm-hmm. way that God has, with the gifts he's given you. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> with that comes challenges. So. Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, the... Uh, I guess I, I look upon it. I, I, too, had done something like that at one particular point in my life. And... Uh, I, I thought my wife was going to shoot me, not because, not because I did what I did, but because I started having second thoughts, you know, oh, yeah. you know, and did, did that hit you? Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, um, it, it's really, sometimes it's hard, uh, like I was saying, going from a stable income to going just to, um, like Brian Tracy said one time, you only eat what you kill. Mm-hmm. You know, and that, that's, <laughs> that's so hard. That's so hard not having that stable income and knowing that income really directly depends on your ability to get sales. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, that is such a great motivator. And, you know, how do you combat that? Well, um, you, you pray. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you talk to God. I don't remember what saying it was, but it's such a, a great quote. I, he said, um, pray like everything depends on God and work like everything depends on you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've heard that many times. My wife uses that a lot. And, and, and it is so true, you know, because you have to sometimes just take a couple steps back and say, Heavenly Father, all right, I've, I, I've been – teasing myself that I had some control here, you know, but I know that it's all you. So, you know, d- d- turn me, you know, direct me where I'm supposed to go and what I'm supposed to do. So now in your business that you have today, uh, which, you know, you, you jumped out there and you're doing this, um, which is, which is your, uh, I guess your, your favorite part of the business? Oh my goodness. You know, it's so funny. I'm, I call myself an extroverted introvert. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And the reason I say that is because sales scared me. Networking with people scared me. And Mm -hmm. I'm finding the more networking I'm doing, the more people I'm shaking hands with and getting to know, the more I enjoy that part. And and it's so funny. I would have never thought that, you know, and this is so typical. A designer just kind of hold up in their office. Don't come in. I'm trying to work on a a thing, you know, but um, so that's another thing that that business has brought out. It's it's just the opportunity to meet people and hearing people's stories. Mm -hmm. And and so it's really cool because I resonate with a lot of people in that way because I part of my job is bringing stories out for other people so that they can be heard. Their businesses can be heard so they can evangelize or bring services and products to people who need it right you know so uh so that's certainly a surprise for me but as far as the services i offer the things that i do um i i love all of them for different reasons but i really like photography and videography a lot um it's very challenging Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also very satisfying so yeah and you talked before uh, we were conversing earlier about branding and yes. that is something that, you know, it's it, it, in today's business world, the brand is everything. Yes, that's true. So, you know, I started freelance mostly as a graphic designer. So I did a lot of a lot of logos, a lot of branding projects. So mm-hmm. I've got a lot of experience in that. And I've seen a lot of things. And I, let me tell you, Ron, it's it's so neat to start from ground zero mm-hmm. with a client and even to the point of recommending a business name. You know that that in itself can be a creative uh, a creative. Uh, oh, very much well. so, and um, and and it's so nice to have that ability too. But just starting out from ground zero and building up something the right way, foundational, um, and and seeing the appreciation and and the success that is built on a solid rock like that mm-hmm. is is so exciting and so much fun. So, and you know if if you've missed the boat. Um, you can also do a (laughs) rebrand. I do a lot of that as well. So, well, no, that's true. And a lot of people do that. You know, there's, there's uh, a lot of companies out there that some, some wait a long time before they realize that all of a sudden it's like, maybe we should have redo this here a little bit where other companies are sitting there saying, okay, well, we've tried this for four or five months. 
and we're not getting the the result that we we thought we were going to get now that might be too fast to turn but you know sometimes people just have to they look at it and realize well maybe that was a mistake you know we need to make this other adjustment now do you get involved with with sharing with them yeah maybe it was a little bit of a mistake you know or they didn't listen to you maybe on what you suggested sure well you know that's a funny thing because i feel like good businesses are built on mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're all going to make mistakes and that's what we learn from. You know, if, if you get it right, if you get a lucky streak and you mm -hmm. get it right in the beginning, that's great, but you're not going to learn as much as if you've made a mistake. And you know, there's, there's multiple paths to business. Business is a wonderful thing because it's very fluid. I can do something completely different than, than you can, Ron, mm -hmm. and we can still be successful. And you know, we may not find success at the same time and that's okay. Right. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, it's, and, and so I kind of take it, I take that approach. You know, if somebody comes to me and says, Hey, I've built this business, it was completely by accident. Um, but it just, it just blew up and it was so successful. But you know, it's this, this aspect of that business is successful, but now we need to work on this part. Can you help mm -hmm. me with that? Can you, can you consult me with this? And I say, of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes praise God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, that's yeah. I think there's, uh, you know, so many different things that, you know, when, you, when I think of marketing, you know, it's just, you know, a good marketing mind just goes in thousands of directions, you know, and you got to just, oh, I got that one. You know, you got to grab the one that makes the most sense. But at the same time, you know, um, what are some success stories that maybe you've had in your business that, that you could share with people? Sure. Oh man, gosh, where to start? <laughs> and it's not me. It's, it's you got five you know, minutes. Okay. So, um, so uh, I've done um, this. There's this one client I have, if I may share, it's mm -hmm. Jeremiah Davis. And okay. He, he's a new business. He's a new broker in Hendersonville. He's a real estate brokerage mm -hmm. and um, he's, he's the same soup to nuts kind of, kind of situation. Um, we started with his logo. We did a whole, uh, YouTube series for him. We sat down and shot a day shoot. We did 12 episodes for him. Um, in know, one day, in one day. Yes. It was, it was quite a day. It was a I, piece of a day. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. But, uh, but you know, he's, uh, he's a wonderful example of, of that success. You know, he's, um, a, as a thriving business owner and, and it's just, it's another thing. It's another uh, proud moment that that I can say, "Hey, you know, I've I've helped somebody who has values that are similar to mine to my business, mm -hmm. and and it's amazing just to watch clients grow um, because their success is is great for me. It's, it's success for me as well um, because I, I you know I, I want them to succeed also. Sure, so. sure. Because in a way, it's attributed to to your efforts as well as it is theirs. Mm -hmm. Any other success stories that you can think of that you'd like to share? Um, just, you know, on the photography side, mm -hmm. I, I really am grateful for being able to travel and, and shoot priestly ordinations. Um, I've done a number of those now. Uh, for yeah, I was going to say, how did you get uh, captured in Houston? I think that, that's neat. <laughs> so I, That's a success story right yeah, there. <laughs> right. One of my clients are, are the Passionists, which is a religious order. Mm -hmm. And they're not based in Nashville, but they have the Passionist partners that are based there. And uh -huh. I started working with them, became a partner myself, and was invited over to a few different places to do some video work for them, which is ongoing. COVID kind of put a little bit of stop right, for that. Right. But, uh, so I'll be, I'll be traveling pretty soon to, to kind of wrap that up. But one of the things I did for them was I went out to Houston and I shot uh, a priestly ordination for one of their um, their new priests. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that kind of just snowballed into other stuff. I, I was speaking to a few people in that diocese over there and I got a call from the Companions of the Cross. And so, you know, it, it just it just started snowballing. And I've been I'm very blessed and very happy for that. And. Um, I guess I'm doing a good job. <laughs> well, I would say so. You know, I mean, you know, if you're going to do something, do it right. Right. right? <laughs> and they certainly know that you've done it well for them. And uh, I'm familiar with that group, and I know that they're not pulling you along. They're, 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 they're driving you because they know you've done a great job for them. 
Well, we've got about two minutes left here. I wanted you to be able to share how people can get a hold of you, Christopher. Uh, you know, phone number, if there are websites or anything like that, or anything else that you'd like to share. Sure. So just just a, a quick sharing thing. I'm, I run a design and marketing firm. I do graphic design, photography, web design, and videography as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you want any of those services, you can get a hold of me um, through email. It's just Chris, C-H-R-I-S, at Christopher Gunn, C-H-R-I-S-T-O-P-H-E-R-G as in golf, U-N-N dot net. And, uh, and then ChristopherGunn.net is my website as well. That's, that's probably the best way to reach me. Mm-hmm. So Okay. And do you have a phone number here sure. for your My number office? is 615-423-0567. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I I just think what a neat success story that you, you had. I mean, uh, when you look at this, you, you're, you're a very well-rounded individual, family man, four kids. What are your kids' ages, by the way? Oh, gosh. You know, it's funny you ask that. You always, you always have to see, where are we in the year with yeah. birthdays? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, know so that well. <laughs> it's 12. So I've got girl, boy, boy, girl, and it's 12, 11, 9, and 8. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So you had at least a year off there. Yeah, we took a little break in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, that's great. But here you are. You, I mean, very well-rounded family man. Um, you, you work at Our Lady of the Lake a, in a music position as a music director and all of the, the values and everything that that brings with you. And your faith led you there and has kept you there for many, many years, and, and thank God for that. And then at the same time, we also have the opportunity over here for you to be starting your own business uh, in design and, and uh, video and photography and such. We're just happy as can be for you. That's fantastic, Christopher. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, we're delighted that you were able to join us today and uh, wish you all the best you know, from here on and as you have had up to here. Please join us next week when Faith and Business will take a journey with another person in business who will also share how they keep Christ centered in their career as well as their home life. My name's Ron Flights. Both Christopher and I thank you for sharing your time with us today. Faith and Business is made possible through the generous donations of our listeners and sponsors and the Diocese of Nashville. Shining the light of our Catholic faith in everyday life, this is Nashville Catholic Radio, 100.5 FM, and streaming at nashvillecr.com.